and leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. Okay, grass. Google who is Reggie Middleton. As you see, I could speak in a conversational tone, and grass picks it right up. According to Wikipedia, Reggie Middleton is an American financial analyst who is the founder and editor of the financial blog, Boombus Blog. Okay, Grass, Google, Reggie Middleton, CNBC, 2013 stock draft. The reason why I articulated that one clearly was because uh, I found certain phrases have to be sp spoken clearly while others can be just blurted out. As a matter of fact, blurted out with a heavy accent or several errors, grammatical errors. So here we go again, several results. Grass will even play videos directly into your eyes. Kind of interested in you said you would pick Google today yes. if it was in if it was on offer if we were doing this all over again Absolutely. and yet for example today BMO just actually downgraded the stock not because it thinks that you know the stock is bad or fundamentally it's got a problem or whatever it's just come up so much right I think it's come up about 39 percent 40 percent or something since, since June of last year okay glass listen to Michael Jackson Does a search to my library, my music library, which is sitting on the cloud. Find Michael Jackson. Now uh, you could do Michael Jackson Radio, which is an algorithmic compilation of Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson like artists, very similar to Pandora. Or it can go through your own personal um, library right here. Oh, I'm sorry, your own personal library. Let's give it a try. Michael Jackson, pretty young thing. Play. Now, for those of you who are wondering uh, about the audio quality, it's actually amazingly good. I was shocked. I was pleasantly surprised. When I picked up uh, the Beta 2 of the hardware, it came with a monobud, uh, played music just through one ear, surprisingly clear, surprisingly crisp, with bass response, not overdone. Uh, the stereo buds should be much better. The, I would rate the quality either at or slightly above the earbuds that come with the iPhone 5 and the uh, Apple iPods. Um, similar clarity, similar response. They have a slightly better low end. You know, not audiophile, but definitely much better than you expect. And of course, you could always get audiophile earbuds, I'm sure, if that's what you wish. My only concern, and you're on my team, so, but, but here's the point. It, it's peaked out in March. Hopefully it will re-peak. Otherwise, we're in trouble. What makes you think it's, it's going to go back to its March highs? Because it's, it's had a good run the last number of years, Richard. Yeah, T zoom in on stocks. Google, 1,084. First recommended somewhere around 400 and change. That's almost a three times return. Boom, plus blocks subscribers. Definitely got their money's worth. Apple, 565. Recommended we short Apple at 700, almost even. You see the weather? So different boroughs. Forecast. I mean, not to be impolite, but what makes you so special that they all want to read your blog? Um, I can step on toes and be objective, objective and uh, offensively honest. Google Glass is easily Google's iPhone, okay? If Google Glass succeeds, it changes the way computing is done. You no longer use cell phones, notebooks, laptops. You walk around, your computing experience is 
implied virtual reality. It's worn on your eyes. It's a total different way of doing things. One second. This is Reggie Middleton. I'm here to introduce Glass. Uh, this is the wearable computer that I'm forming solutions around for several verticals. This is the new form of computing, mobile computing. No more um, cell phones or flat screens, which was the best new thing, a big thing just a few years ago. No more typing on keyboards. Now we have contextual computing. Computers that you wear, computers that are aware of the environment, computers that you can actually have a conversation with to compute. Okay, Glass. Translate this. It's going to tell something. It's not lower to the way it gives no motive insecurity. No motive insecurity. It's way outrageous report to official. Okay, Glass. Translate this. As you can see, it translates this French text into English right in front of me as I look at it. Okay, Glass. Get directions to the New York Stock Exchange. Now check this out. This is pretty slick. It's going to give you biking directions to the New York Stock Exchange. Gives you the address. If you can't hear it because I didn't put it to the ear, but it actually gives you a verbal uh, instructions as well through the earpiece or the bone induction speaker. And what's cool about biking is as you turn your head with your bike, left and right, the map turns with you, as you can see. Now, we're going to change. It shows you the route. Right? The full route for biking. And we could change the method as well. The transportation method. Walking. Transit. This actually shows you the New York City subway system. It also shows you if there are any delays. You see the yellow portion. The yellow portion shows you where the train and or bus and or ferry is running slow. And then you see where it runs a little faster, where it's green. You can also get step-by-step -step directions. With each train, how long it would take, how long the walk would take, etc. You can contact, go directly to the agency website, the MTA site. You could give them a call from where you are, or with a tap of the button. This is all from grass, by the way. Okay, instead of step by step, we want to change the transportation method to driving. Okay, and you see it actually speaks the instructions to you. Again, as you turn your head or your car, everything turns automatically. Okay, glass. Show route overview. And it shows you the traffic between this uh, particular location and your destination. The yellow shows where traffic slows up. The little red shows you where the actual traffic jam. Google Glass is easily Google's iPhone. Okay? If Google Glass succeeds, it changes the way computing is done. You no longer use cell phones, notebooks, laptops. You walk around. Your computing experience is... Implied virtual reality, it's worn on your eyes. It's a total different way of doing things. One second.
Okay, Reggie Middleton back again. Uh, I'm in uh, local New York City Best Buy. And again, I'm attempting to throw light on the new wave of uh, computing. As you see, this is the way we all did things. The way I used to do it, you know, we had our keyboards, our laptops, you sit down, we look at things. You do a Google search, you know, type in google.com, who is Reggie Middleton. Now we go, okay, grass, search, Google, who is Reggie Middleton? And now we're connected and it's doing a search. I'm getting my, and I have my Wikipedia page up. Again, this is contextual computing. You know, the age of keyboards will soon be gone. The age of, again, cell phones will be gone. A conversation is how you do a search. That's where it So the be. question of the day is, you know, this new technology, this next big thing, it's cool, it's cute, nerdy, but sexy, you know, but how can we make money with it? Well, that's an interesting question. And I'm going to give you a very, very honest, straight, and logical answer. This is the next big thing, next big thing. The limits are limitless, you know, this is so big as to be difficult to actually wrap your head around and can, you can conceptualize it, but it's very difficult to quantify it. This is the reason. When you have a paradigm shift, you have a very, very drastic change in the way things are done. Basically, during every technology paradigm shift we've had, and I'll go through the last few ones just to draw the memory of those who are not really well-versed in the industry. <clears throat> You've had the shift from main um, frame computers to mini computers, the big IBM computer in a room to a mini computer, which is basically a five or six foot tower, a shift from the mini computer to the microcomputer, which is a desktop, okay, that you t uh, type on with the screen. Then you had the shift from the desktop computer to the laptop or notebook computer. Very recently, we had a shift from the notebook computer to the smartphone, which is a handheld computer. Today's high-powered smartphones are just as strong and stronger than the mainframe computers from the 60s. Okay, each and every one of those was such a drastic shift in the way things were done, it shook up the industry, and nobody really knew, from an honest perspective, exactly how big the market was or how to quantify it in terms of dollars, the economic impact. But each shift was dramatic. You know, multi-billionaires were made, billions were lost, you know, empires and um, virtual monopolies were created and destroyed. This is another such paradigm shift. This paradigm shift is, in my opinion, bigger than all the others. So, as a matter of fact, it's bigger than some of the others combined. So, how much is it worth? I don't know. You know, nobody else knows either. But we're talking a massive paradigm shift. Tens, hundreds of billions of dollars in the difference.